गुड मॉर्निंग ऑफ यू so in the previous class we discussed about uh, rule based expert systems <clears throat> and uh, we also discussed about uh, blackboard okay so so we discussed about uh, rule based expert systems and also blackboard systems in the previous class okay now in today's class we discuss about truth maintenance systems that is tms truth maintenance system truth maintenance system tms Hmm. Let me share my screen to you. so truth maintenance system tms so tms uh, truth maintenance system tms is a structure which helps in uh, revising set of beliefs and maintaining the truth every time new information contradicts information already present in the system okay so this particular uh, tms that is truth maintenance system is a structure so it is a structure that helps in revising set of beliefs that means we have some set of beliefs and some truths set of beliefs means what we believe we believe is nothing but the belief okay set of beliefs and maintaining the truth every time that means uh, truth that means truth means nism okay so uh, that means it is a fact truth is nothing but a fact so uh, so set of beliefs and set of facts those will be maintained right so every time whenever uh, new information is added to the uh, system 
then the, this particular structure TMS helps in revising set of beliefs and maintaining the truth every time new information contradicts information already present in the system. That means uh, in the in a particular system, we have some information. Okay, so whenever new information is being added to the system, so it compares it with the set of beliefs and truths. So whenever there's a contradiction uh, between the information present in the system and the new information which we add to the system, then uh, this particular um, uh, TMS uh, will draw some uh, conclusions so based on the set of beliefs and set of truths. Okay, so whenever there's a contradiction between the information already present in the system, the new information that is to be added to the system, then this particular TMS come into existence. Okay, right. So this particular uh, TMS is proposed by, is or developed by Doyle. So it was developed by Doyle, D-O-Y, D-O-Y-L-E, Doyle, the year 1979. So this particular TMS maintains the beliefs for general problem solving systems. That means um, for general problem solving systems, we're going to use this TMS in order to maintain the beliefs. This particular TMS maintains the beliefs for general problem solving systems. Right, next, all TMS manipulate proposition symbols and the relationship between different propositional symbols. Okay, so uh, they're going to manipulate. So this particular TMS is going to manipulate uh, proposition symbols and the relationships between different propositional symbols. Okay, this for manipulating and um, comparing the proportional symbols. So we're going to use this TMS. So here we have two types of uh, TMS. One is monotonic TMS and monotonic TMS. Coming to monotonic TMS, so this uh, monotonic TMS manipulates the proportional symbols and Boolean constraints. We have some Boolean constraints. So that means uh, Boolean conditions and con constraint mean condition. So we have some Boolean constraints or Boolean conditions and also propositional symbols. So manipulation of these particular uh, propositional symbols and Boolean constraints is done by the monotonic TMS. Coming to non-monotonic TMS, it allows for heuristic or non-monotonic relationship between proportional symbols. Okay, so so uh, so the difference between monotonic and non-monotonic is nothing but uh, monotonic manipulates proportional symbols and Boolean constraints, whereas non-monotonic TMS uh, allows for heuristic or non-monotonic relationship between proportional symbols, okay? Uh, for example, whenever P is true, Q is likely, or if P is true, then unless there is evidence to the contrary Q, is assumed to be true. That is the thing, but uh, heuristic information, right? Next, uh, now let us see uh, about uh, monotonic system and logic and non-monotonic system and logic. Coming to the monotonic system and logic, uh, in monotonic system, once a fact or piece of knowledge is stored in the knowledge base, is identified. That means in this particular non monotonic system, once a fact or piece of knowledge stored in the knowledge base is identified, it cannot be changed during the process of reasoning. Okay, it means once, once uh, the once a particular knowledge is being added to the knowledge base, we cannot change it. We cannot change it. Change it while reasoning. Okay. Next. So in other words, axioms are not allowed to change as once a fact is confirmed to be true, it must always remain true and can never be modified. That means. Uh, whenever a particular axiom, that means for, suppose we want to we want to prove one axiom, okay? So we need to consider that particular axiom and we're going to prove that uh, axiom. So we cannot change that one. It means once an axiom is taken into consideration uh, uh, for proving, we cannot change it in the middle, in the middle of the pro proving, okay? So axioms are not allowed to change once a fact is confirmed to be true. That means uh, we are uh, confirming that this particular uh, uh, truth is true. This particular fact is true. Okay. 
So uh, whenever we're considering it is true, we cannot change it. We cannot change it or we can modify it in the middle while proving, okay? So the same way, uh, so uh, whenever a particular knowledge or fact is stored in the knowledge base, we cannot modify in the middle. That's it, right? So if a formula is a theorem for a particular formal theory, then that formula remains a theorem for any augmented theory obtained by adding axioms to the theory. For instance, uh, if a property P is a theorem of T, and if T is augmented to T1 by additional axioms, then P remains a theorem of T1. Further, if an axiom A is added to the theory T to build a theory, uh, T1 to the theory, uh, to build a theory T, T1, then all the theorems of T are also theorems of T1. That means whatever we could, uh, consider for theorem T, that will also be considered for theorem T1. Okay. Right, next. Uh, so in monotonic reasoning, the world of axioms continually increases in size and keeps on expanding. So an example for this one is predicate logic. That means um, that is the number of axioms which are going to add it to the monotonic system increases in size and they keep on expanding. Okay, so that is regarding monotonic system and logic. And coming to the non monotonic system and logic, uh, in this particular non monotonic system, truths that are present in the system can be detracted whenever contradictions arise. That means in monotonic system, whenever uh, whenever some contradiction arises, we cannot change it or we cannot backtrack. Whereas in non-monotonic system, we can backtrack if any uh, if any contradiction occurs. So if any contradiction occurs in the middle, then we can retract or we can backtrack in non-monotonic. But that is not possible in monotonic. Okay. So in non-monotonic systems. Uh, truths that are present in the system can be detracted whenever contradictions arise. Okay, at least we can backtrack in non-monotonic, but in monotonic we cannot backtrack. Okay, so next. Hence, the number of axioms uh, can increase as well as decrease. So there is an increase or decrease in the number of axioms. The system is continually updated depending on the changes in knowledge base. The system is continually updated depending upon the changes in knowledge base. Right. <clears throat> Next, in non monotonic logic, so, so based on the changes in the knowledge base, the system gets updated every time. Next, in non monotonic logic, if a formula is a theorem for a formal theory, then it need not be theorem for an augmented theory. Okay, for, for example, uh, in a formal theory, if you're considering a formula and that particular uh, theorem and that um, can cannot be uh, taken into consideration for augmented theory. Okay, that is, it may not, it may or may not be the same, right? Next, so common sense reasoning is the example for non monotonic theory. So example for this uh, non monotonic reasoning is common sense reasoning. Common sense reasoning. Right. So this is how the interaction takes place between different components in problem solver. Right. We have an inference engine, engine, truth maintenance system, and knowledge base. Truth maintenance system is bidirectional with inference engine. Okay, uh, that means uh, the inference engine is going to tell why that particular thing is being considered. And next, uh, the TMS is going to ask the questions to the inference engine. Whenever some question is asked by the TMS, it will tell the answer to the TMS. Now the T TMS, um, so whenever a particular uh, information is to be added to the knowledge base, it is being added by the TMS to knowledge base. And that particular knowledge base also interacts with the inference engine whenever there is a need of extra knowledge or updation of knowledge. Okay. 
so this is how to solve a problem so this is the uh, this is the interaction between different components in the problem solver because whenever a particular problem is there it is given to the uh, tms so that particular tms will ask the question to solve the problem then it is going to uh, refer the knowledge base and is going to answer the question okay right next the term truth maintenance uh, truth maintenance is synonymous with the term knowledge based maintenance and is defined as keeping track of the interactions between assertions and knowledge that is whenever the particular knowledge is to be added to the knowledge base so the knowledge base uh, maintenance or the truth maintenance uh, will act as same okay so they go to so this particular knowledge base or the truth uh, the uh, knowledge base maintenance or the truth maintenance are nothing but the um, it is going to keep track of the interactions between the assertions in the knowledge base that is whenever a particular knowledge is being added to the knowledge base it keeps track of the knowledge okay next the main job of tms is to maintain consistency of the knowledge being used by the problem solver Okay. So the main job of TMS is to maintain consistency of the knowledge being used by the problem solver. That means it maintains consistency. Okay. Next, so the inference engine IE solves domain problems, domain problems based on its current belief set. Based on its current belief set. Okay. Knowledge is knowledge base is a knowledge base keep track of the knowledge. Next, uh, TMS is used for maintaining the consistency of knowledge being uh, being used by the problem solver. So, TMS is for consistency. Uh, next, knowledge base is for uh, keeping track of interrelations between the assertions in the knowledge base. And third one, inference engine IE. It solves the domain problems based on its current belief set. Okay, so uh, this is regarding non-monotonic system and logic. Okay. Next one is monotonic TMS. Monotonic TMS. So a monotonic TMS is a general facility for manipulating Boolean constraints on proportional symbols. For example. Uh, we have the constraint like this p implies q where p and q are propositions symbols the p and q are proposition symbols so functionality uh, functionality of modern tms is like this first one is add constraint second one follow from third one interface functions add constraint follow from interface function come to the add constraint uh, so add constraint is nothing but the interface functions add a constraint to the internal constraint set. So we have some internal constraint set to, to that particular constraint set. <clears throat> We're going to add this particular inter, inter, interface function. Once a constraint has been added, it can never be removed. Means whenever a particular constraint is being added to the uh, internal constraint set, we cannot modify it. Okay. Next, uh, next one is follow from. So add constraint is nothing but adding a constraint or a condition to the um, internal constraint set. Okay. So when uh, whenever uh, a constraint is being added to the constraint set, we cannot remove it or we cannot uh, modify it. Once it is added, it is added. That's it. We cannot remove or modify it. Next one, follow from. <clears throat> so this particular function takes two arguments. One is literal L and premise set. Sigma letter L and premise set okay. Uh, and if, uh, so letter L and premise set sigma and returns the values S no or unknown. So it, it is going to return either S value or no value or unknown value. Okay. Uh, it takes into consideration two arguments. One is lateral, lateral is an argument, and premise it sigma is an argument. 
and it is going to return either yes or no or unknown okay next okay uh, next one suppose if yes is written you have three options yes no or unknown if yes is written then the tms guarantees that l allows l l, l for us from the sigma and it not constraints okay means uh, when do we get s so we get s whenever it guarantees that l follows from the sigma l is nothing but lateral lateral follows from the premise set and it not constraints next if no is written if no is written then the tms guarantees that l does not follow from the sigma and internal constraints so if it follows you will get s if it doesn't follow you will get no next if tms is unable to determine then it returns unknown okay so either we get uh, s or no or unknown okay Okay. Uh, next. So, next one interface functions. Come to interface functions. Uh, these interface functions are uh, used to compute the justifications. So in order to compute in order to compute justifications, we're going to use interface functions. Uh, here we have two interface functions that are used to generate proofs. They are justifying literals and justifying constraints we have two things one is justifying literals and justifying constraints so these are the two interface functions we use for computing the justifications this is justifying literals and justifying constraints now let's consider an example here okay so i have premise set uh, like this sigma equals to p comma w and internal constraint set is p implies q next P and W implies R. Next, Q and R implies S. Okay, so these are these are the uh, so these are the these are given right. Now let now let us write three things. What is <coughs> justification <coughs> justification justification literals L. Uh, next one. <coughs> derived literals and justifying constraints so these are the three things we have to write justification literals derived literals justification literals but uh, e w p comma w there is from p comma w next so under um, now I, I need to consider the internal constraint set whenever i have a p and w i need to derive r okay okay so um first one is P comma W, that is the justification lateral. So uh, whenever we have P and W from that particular thing, what is what is the derived lateral? We have to write on a derived lateral. So in the internal constraint set, we ha I have P implies Q. Uh, next one, P e and W implies R. That is. Uh, P and W, it gives R. So that is the derivative lateral. So I can write it under derivative lateral. So wherever I have P and W, what does it imply? There is the derivative lateral. So R is the derivative lateral here. Next one is justification constraints. So justification constraint is nothing but P and W implies R. That is justification constraint. Next, uh, another uh, justification lateral is. P and the justification letter is P. Okay. Uh, 
P means P implies Q. So P implies Q. That is an inter constraint set. We have I have P implies Q. That means Q will become derivable later on. And on the justification constraint, I can write P implies Q. Next. And another uh, thing is Q comma R. Our justification letter is Q comma R. So the inter constraint set I have. Uh, Q and R implies S. Okay, so that means it is going to derive the lateral S. So uh, under justification letters Q comma R, under derived letters S. Next, the same way under justification constraints Q and R implies S. Okay, so that is. So this is the, this is the justification. Uh, so this is how to prove the. Um, so this is how to use the uh, monotonic TMS. Okay. Now, uh, now I need to draw the justification tree like this. I need to draw the justification tree. Okay. First consider from bottom, right? So S. Yes, means um, the under justification constraint. Um, the justification constraint is uh, represented with the uh, dotted line. Okay. Right. So under that, I need to write the justification letters. So I need to write the justification letters and derive letters. So from the derive letters, I need to write the justification letters. And in order to get the justification letters, I need to write the justification constraints. So justification constraints are written in a, a dotted arrow or dotted line, right? Next. So QR means on one side write Q and the side write R. So derivation of Q means P in plus Q. Next derivation of R means P and W. Okay. Next. Uh, so I got a P implies Q, no? That's why P implies Q. It is P to Q. Uh, next, R. R means P and W. So I can write P and P comma W implies to R. So this is how to get the justification tree. Okay. Oh uh, no, let us see. Uh, Non-monotonic uh, TMS. Non-monotonic TMS. So the basic operation of TMS is to add or attach justification to a fact. In order to attach a justification or in order to add a justification to a fact, we are going to use TMS, truth maintenance system. So that is the basic operation of TMS, to add or to attach a justification to a fact. So a fact can be linked with any component of programming knowledge, which is to be connected with other components of program, program information. Support list is defined as SL, in node and out node. Support list is uh, in node and out node. Support list SL equals to in node and out node. That means inward node and outward node. Next, so where in node represents a list of all inner nodes or propositions that support the considered node is now that consider that uh, support the Consider the, con the support the considered node as true. Here in means that the belief is true. So the belief is true. Out node is a list of all out outward nodes that do not support the considered node as true. That means inward nodes are nothing but we think that the belief is true. Those are the inward nodes. And outward node is nothing but uh, it doesn't support the uh, constant node as true. Okay, those are the outward nodes, right? Out means that the belief is not true for constant node. In means it believes that uh, it believes that it is true. Out means it doesn't believe that it is true. Okay, next, next one. Uh, now let us consider uh, some justification of facts here. 
so uh, node number one so node numbers facts or assertions and justification justification nothing but justified belief okay so first node number one it is sunny that is one fact okay uh, next Uh, next one, second one is it rains. Third one is it is warm. Fourth one is it is night time. So these are some of the uh, facts or assertions. Okay. So here justification or justified belief is SL of SL means a support list. Support list of three comma two comma four. Three. Uh, Three is it is warm. Two and four means it rains. It is night time. So based on that, uh, I can believe that it is sunny. Next one, it rains. So there is no justified belief. That's why I written empty. Next one, it is warm. It is warm means it is sunny. It rains. Next, it is night time. Yes. First one is empty, and next one is one. Okay. So in the above case, an entry list indicates that the justification does not depend on the current belief or disbelief. If uh, it if a particular um, uh, justification does not depend on the current belief or disbelief, then we can write it as empty. Next, node one assumes that it is sunny. Node one assumes that it is sunny, provided that it is warm and it does not rain. Provided that it is warm, warm, and it does not rain, and it is not the night time. Okay. That means, uh, when do we say that it is uh, sunny? So, sunny means some um, warmness should be there. That's why I written SL of three. And next one, uh, it should not rain and it should and it should not be night time. Okay, that's why I written like that. SL of three, two gamma four. Next one, no two. No two has empty list, indicating that its justification does not depend on current beliefs or disbeliefs. If it does not depend on anything, then we have to write empty list. Next one, it is warm. No three. No three means it is warm. So no three assumes that it is warm, given that, given that, um, Uh, so no, it is warm. It is warm means uh, it is sunny and it does not rain. It is sunny. It is warm means it is sunny and it does not rain. Then we can say it is sunny. Next note four is it is night time. It is night time. So it does not depend on the list in its uh, in node part. Okay. That is the first one is inward node. And the next one is outward node. So inward node means that will be the belief. Outward node means it uh, it doesn't come under belief. It is disbelief. Okay. So that's why I written like that. Right. So this is regarding uh, monotonic and uh, non-monotonic TMS. Okay.
okay so next topic is applications of expert systems so coming to the applications of expert systems the applications here are um design domain medical domain prediction monitoring systems process control systems knowledge domain finance or commerce so these are the applications of expert systems coming to the, the first application design domain so it is in a, so it is used in design domain for example in camera lens design automobile design we use this uh, expert system next under medical domain uh, in order to diagnose in order to diagnose some disease that means diagnosis system to deduce cause of disease from observed data conduction of med medical operations on humans that means in order to do operations or in order to medical operations or in order to identify or diagnose the disease from the observed data we are going to use this uh, in medical domain next one is prediction next one is prediction so it performs the task of inferring the likely consequences of a situation like weather prediction for rains storms prediction of crops share market etc so these are some of the examples for prediction next under monitoring systems we use this uh, expert systems so in monitoring systems we can compare the data continuously with observed system or is prescribed behaviors just uh, leakage monitoring in long petroleum pipeline so that means monitoring we can use this in a, a petrol pipelines right so in order to observe in order to observe the behavior so whether a, a petrol is being flown perfectly or not okay monitoring next next one is process control systems for example uh, it is used in controlling a physical process based on monitoring next one uh, knowledge domain knowledge domain means uh, Uh, it is used to find out faults in vehicles computers etc next one is finance or commerce there is a detection of possible fraud uh, next to suspicious transactions stock market trading airline scheduling cargo scheduling all these are these not examples for finance or commerce okay so coming to the list of shells and tools list of shells and tools uh, the list of shells and tools uh, the popular list of uh, the popular list of uh, shells and tools are acquire arity art and clips okay uh, next acquire means it is primarily a knowledge acquisition system and expert system shell that provides a complete development environment for the building and maintenance of knowledge based applications okay mm, for example acquire stk it is a software development kit provides collaborative systems such as ms dos windows windows nt windows 95 in 32 all these okay uh, so this provides development environment for building and building and maintenance of knowledge based applications next one is arity arity yeah arity way so arity means it is an expert development package so it is an expert development package so it's expert uh, it is an expert development package uh, in an um, expert system that is developed for uh, that was developed by arity corporation 
so it is a expert development package art next one is art 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 so it is called automatic automated reasoning tool automated reasoning tool art automated reasoning tool art which is an expert system shell that is based on lisp it supports rule based reasoning hypothetical reasoning and case based reasoning and next one is uh, uh, clips clips means c language integrated production system c language integrated production system oh, which is a public domain software tool used for building expert systems so it is the most widely used expert system tool which is a fast efficient and free okay next one is flex so it is a hybrid expert system implemented in prolog that supports a forward reasoning and backward chain multiple inheritance and possess and possess an automatic question and answer system okay next one genesis g2 so it offers a graphical object oriented environment for the creation of uh, intelligent uh, applications that are able to monitor diagnose and control dynamic events in the various environments next one is guru so it is an expert system developer environment that offers wide variety of information processing tools combined with knowledge based capabilities such as forward chaining backward chaining mixed chaining multi value variables and fuzzy and fuzzy reasoning and another system is hugin h u g i n hugin system so it's a software package for construction of model based expert system which is easy to use next one is knowledge craft so it is an expert system development toolkit for scheduling design and configuration okay next one is k vision so it is a knowledge acquisition and visualization tool that turns on windows tos and unix okay uh, next one knowledge uh, next one is k vision so it is a knowledge acquisition and visualization tool that turns on windows tos and unix workstations next one is mailbot mailbot so it is a personal email agent that reads an email message on standard input and creates an email reply to be sent to the sender of the original message that is for receiving and uh, sending the mails okay uh, this this mailbot is used so it provides filtering filtering of messages forwarding of messages notifications and automatic question answering capabilities okay. and the last one is tmisin tmisin so it is an acronym for tiny emisin and is an expert system shell okay uh, that is developed at some stanford university and it is useful in student exercises okay uh, next one um, tmisin is written in common list and it, it is fairly small okay now let me see how many have attended my class Only sixty-two are present today. So this I am stopping my class. Discuss the remainder of the next class. Okay, thank you.